Okay, so in this video we're looking at first order differential equations again, but this time we're looking at um, what we've done when we've solved them already, and we have to draw down a family of solution curves for the solution that we've found. Um, some terminology, general solution, this word here, um, and family solution curves, and first order differential equations. There's so many words there that are probably quite new to you um, and can be quite confusing, quite intimidating, uh, and it's a notation of the language they're used that makes this seem more difficult than it actually is. So let's try to piece together what we mean. So in the last video, we looked at this first order differential equation, and we found that this solution. Now, um, this is called a general solution for this differential equation. It's called general because we don't know the value of C. So you can take any value we like and that would still work instead of the equation. We differentiate um, a third x cubed, it would work for this equation. If we differentiated um, a third x cubed plus one, the one would disappear and so it would still work in this equation. This would still be a valid solution. So there's in fact an infinite number of solutions. So this is not a specific or particular solution, this is a general solution. Um, and that means we have a lot of different uh, possible curves. Um, imagine if c was zero, then one of the solutions we'd have would be this. If c was 1, we'd have this. If c was 2, we'd have this, and so on. And each of these is a curve. Um, in fact, when you put them all together, you've got a family of curves. And these curves are solutions, so what we've got is a family of solution curves. And we can sketch these on a graph. And you can sort of see a pattern that emerges from them. So we sketch this first one. What we've got is an x cubed graph. It's slightly changed shape because of the, the third bits had to accept the graph. That is your y is equal to a third x cubed. We sketch the next one. Well, obviously, everything just moves up by one on the y axis. We get something that looks like this. Going through one here. And that graph is y is equal to a third x cubed plus 1. Of course, if we then sketch the next one, it just goes through the point 2, and it's got a very similar shape. These guys stack grouping together here and here, but never touch. And that is y is equal to a third x cubed plus 2. And then the last one, the minus 1, goes through just here. And you can kind of see that this isn't the only options. You can have more going up here or more going down here. It's just four uh, solution curves. There's obviously an infinite number of them. And this is what we call the family of solution curves. So essentially what you're trying to do is once you've found your general solution, you vary the value of C and then you sketch the curve. This is quite a nice solution because you can quite easily see what the curve looks like. You know what an x cubed graph looks like. Normally the hardest thing about sketching solution curves is not varying the value of C. It's just figuring out what the, the curve is in the first place. Um, best way of doing that is by showing you some more examples. So we also have solved this equation in a previous uh, video. We saw that the solution was a half y squared equal to minus a half x squared plus c. Now it's a lot hard to see at the minute what the curve is there. And so what you need to do is rearranging and playing with it until you can work out what the curve looks like. So I see x squared and the y squared. I'm going to stick them both on the same side because I'm thinking that the only thing I've seen with that in it before is a circle. So what we're trying to do is make it look like a circle if it's possible. Maybe it's not. Maybe it is. If I times by 2 here. I've got almost a circle. I've got y squared plus x squared equals some number. C obviously is a isn't a known number, so there's no reason to stick with c. Um, why don't we just make 2c equal to r squared? We're allowed to do that because we don't know what c is, so we might as well replace it with something else. We don't know what it is either. It makes the whole equation look nicer. Um, and there's nothing wrong with swapping c out for another unknown. Of course, you can't swap out x and y, but you can swap out c because c is just, well, going to be, I'm going to pick it in a minute anyway, anyway. so I might as well just pick it out. And now we can see if this actually is a circle. It's got center 0, 0, um, and it's got a radius of r. So 
I can now choose a hat view wherever I like. I can start off with the circle of radius 0, or I could have a circle of radius 1, or I could have a circle of radius 2. Obviously, R squared, 2 pin squared. And we can draw this um, set of solutions. The first one, when R is 0, is just that. Y squared plus X squared equals 0. Not very interesting. And then we can draw the one where it goes through 1 and minus 1. This is obviously Y squared plus X squared is equal to 1. And then we can draw the other one where it goes through all the 2s. This is uh, y squared plus x squared equals 4. And obviously these circles keep going. This is again is another family of solution curves. And you see the hardest thing was knowing how to rearrange that into some fashion that made sense. And that's what you have to practice. We'll do, um, I think, one more today. We solve this differential equation as well. And we got the solution was ln y is equal to minus ln x plus c. It's very difficult to see what that is. Uh, well, I've not seen any logarithm type equations with ln y's in before. Um, and so I'm going to try to rearrange it for y, um, see if that makes it look any better. So what I need to do is do the inverse of ln. The inverse of the natural logarithm ln is to take an exponential of both sides. Being careful to take exponential of the whole of the right hand side not just each individual piece uh, exponentials are not linear and you can't uh, they don't distribute over the plus sign like multiplication and division do um, okay so e of ln y that cancels out to give you just y here um, power rule you can write this as being because think when you times together two powers like x squared times x cubed you add the powers so this is the reverse where we've got two powers where we Separate that and times them together. And now EC, C is a number, so EC is just another number. So let's just uh, do a similar thing to what we did over here and let EC just be equal to a number. Traditionally, we use capital A to have the two, but it's most common. So this EC becomes an A and it's times by this e to the minus ln of x. This is still quite confusing. Uh, we need to get this e and ln together, so we're going to take that minus sign in as a power. Logarithm rules, if you're not doing logarithms, it's going to be quite tricky to understand. And then the e and the ln cancel out, we're left with x to the minus 1, and we can write that as being a over x. This time it's the a that we can vary. So we could say, you know, let a be 0, and we've got y equals 0, or let a be 1, we've got y equal to 1 over x, or let a be 2, we've got y is equal to 2 over x, or let a b minus 1, we've got y is equal to minus 1 over x. Then we sketch those curves down here. Well, y equals 0 is not very interesting, it's just a flat line. y equals 1 over x, we know that. It goes like this and like this, doesn't it? That's uh, y equals 1 over x. Uh, we can do y equals uh, 2 over x, that's just going to be a very similar line. Obviously, there's a bit over here as well. Oh, y equals minus 1 over x. Well, that's facing me to y equals 1 over x. It just goes there instead. And you can kind of see you get more here and here for positive values of a. And more here and here for negative values of a. And this is, again, another family of solution curves. Of course, if you have a is minus half, you get some more in this gap here. Um, so the hardest thing here is about taking your equations and trying to manipulate them and rearrange them until you get an equation that you recognise and can draw. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for a way to rearrange this until you get an equation that you recognise. So best of luck finding those equations hidden in your solutions. Once you've found those equations, you then just vary your A's and plot value or vary your R's or vary your C's, whatever you've changed your, your C into, which is, your, again, your choice to make things just look a little bit nice and make it a little bit easier on you when you're sketching them out. Until next time, goodbye.